So, um, Dad, is it true that you invented direct debits? And how did that happen? Uh, yes, I suppose it is really true. Yeah, that's right, I did. And how? Well, I was chatting to a friend um, in the company I was working for, and we thought, this is ridiculous, that you don't have the opportunity for doing things which we now call direct debit. So you couldn't do that in the 1960s or any time before. What benefits were foreseen from the introduction of direct debits? Making it easier to pay variable amounts of money at variable times. The payment system in the UK was much more rigid. Um, you could write a cheque and send it to your creditor. You could complete a standing order and the bank, your bank would pay a fixed amount at regular intervals um, to whoever you authorised. What you could not do would be to enter into a convenient arrangement for paying variable amounts. Um, and indeed the standing order system was fairly rigid and not widely not nearly as widely used as it is nowadays. Why did you call it direct debit? I began with the name Automatic Debit Transfer, ADT. And then during the discussion, uh, we first of all we thought it was good to shorten that, and secondly, the word direct was um, well, was more direct um, and was a popular word at the time. Um, uh, many services were called direct um, and of course it implied modernness and uh, speed and lack of complication. Uh, there was probably quite a lot of disintermediation going on as you cut out this long chain between manufacturer and consumer. Of course. And I suppose um, a debit is a rather obscure word, isn't it? It is, it is. That was a rather banker's term, and it's a pity, actually, we, we used it. But it's not easy to think of another one. Yes, because you don't want to say, sort of, put your hand in my bank account. So <laughs> exactly. You don't necessarily want to highlight to people the authority that they've given mm. to, the, um, to their creditor. That's right. Yes. And so how long ago did all this happen? In in the 1960s, when I was young and vigorous. You floated the idea in 1964. Yes. Uh, or floated rather campaign for the idea. And it took about four years before it was a, a service that was available to the public. That's right. Yeah. Achieving change in the UK takes time. So was it easy to get adopted? Oh, it, it, there was a battle, a battle. The, 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 the banks at that stage were worked as a cartel and you know what it is breaking through the resistance of a cartel we didn't have powerpoint in those days otherwise i'd have been giving powerpoint presentations but uh, i gave what we would now call presentations and um, gradually overcame the um, reluctance uh, of, of the banks to introduce the service I had many meetings uh, with with stuffy bankers, um, and uh, I, I couldn't make progress at first. But gradually, by persistence, I wore them down. Was there a breakthrough point, or did they sort of have an experiment or something that made it happen? The breakthrough point actually was competition there was going to be a gyro service in competition with them that actually was the tipping point and the banks as a whole said yes in principle but what made you first think of it the requirements of unilever to collect money from thousands of small retailers selling ice cream that was the initial motivation. 
saying we could save costs, we could improve our collections, uh, money is owing to us, uh, we could make everything more convenient if we could be authorised um, by the banking system to collect money direct from the people who owe money to us. Uh, they had a need and they uh, saw that if these retailers um, uh, made direct debit arrangements with us, everyone could gain. Or and Unilever? It was Unilever, yes. But it was my idea. But most inventions come from more than one person thinking of an, an idea around the same time. It, it had already, when we started, um, it, it had uh, been established in Germany for some year, something like it for some years. But of course, precedents from other countries don't um, carry much weight in, in England, in the UK. What about the, the problems which were predicted? Have they materialised? No, they haven't. Uh, a key feature was that anyone who was collecting money from other people had to be reliable. They had to um, sign an agreement that they would uh, correct any mistake without question and they had to be approved by the banks so that there was absolute trust throughout the system and that has happened. You, you never hear now of any problems. What about other countries? Did they adopt it more widely following UK? Using? I don't think it has spread. Trust would be infusing the whole process. Perhaps that's because they don't trust their suppliers. Or their banks, yes. perhaps reasonably. Yes.